I probably just put pen all over my forehead. Are all the cameras on? Oh, is everything on? Yes. Oh, oh. he won film. Thank you. I think our director is saying we should get started. <laughs> You can do that. Are we good? Uh, you did. That's great. We record one episode. No, no, That's the signal. Oh. Uh, hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 11 of Nights at the Round Table. Today we are discussing the 1979 film Carrie, um, an adaptation from Stephen King's book by the same name. I'm sitting here today with Tom and with Matt. And I'd like to start with general impressions of the book. So, Tom, did you want to go first? Once again, it's a movie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, yes. Yes, of the movie. It's a book. But you haven't read the book. No, I haven't read the book. I've only so watched it. So we're just going to stop and go. We'll come back in a week after she's had a chance to read the book, and we'll start over. <laughs> All right, see you guys. <clears throat> God damn it. <laughs> Would you like to start with general impressions of the movie? Please. There we go. <laughs> Are you struggling today? Oh, it seems like it. Coffee. You know what's missing? Alcohol. <laughs> Alright, go. <laughs> uh, ge okay, so general impressions of the movie Carrie. <laughs> that good, huh? Just give me a second. Okay. I watched the movie. Okay, hi, I'm back. <laughs> this is why I should be here. I'm That's why you should. <laughs> Blueprint material. So keep going. <laughs> so Carrie is the story of a teenage girl who uh, rather suddenly acquires powers and uh, gets revenge on the people who've been bullying her. Um, That's your general impression? No, it's more of a summary. Of that. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> Liked it, didn't like it? I quite enjoyed the movie. Okay. Probably because I read the book first and I quite enjoyed the book. <laughs> and then I saw the movie. Okay. Fair enough. Not? Jesus, sweet mother of <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, as far as the movie goes, <laughs> I um I rather enjoyed the movie too. It didn't. Uh, I found it. I found it didn't slip into a lot of the um, tropes that were coming to that were common at that time with the horror film. Well, there weren't a lot of tropes yet because the horror genre was really only starting to come into its own at that point. Well, even what was there. It, I mean, before that, you had what? You had Exorcist, Rosemary's Baby. Um, and some early stuff, but nothing too noteworthy. I know someone on the internet's going to say something about that. But. That's okay, that's what the comments are for. <laughs> um, well, I just, okay. I found Carrie rather unique in the horror aspect of from films that I've seen from that time period, mm -hmm. put it that way. And that's something that I rather liked about it. And uh, from, the, from the movie as a whole, and yeah, just generally speaking, yeah, I, I, I like movies for the genre that it was made for. Uh, yeah, I actually, I really liked Carrie. I didn't I have trouble putting it in the horror genre, though, because... Well, that's why I recommended it, because yeah. I don't think it's a horror movie. No, I, it didn't feel like a horror movie to me. I wasn't scared. I left the movie feeling utterly depressed. <laughs> there were tears, um, but there were no fears. <laughs> God. Eighties bands jump into my head. Tears for tears. But uh, yeah, I wasn't scared. I was just depressed. I found it quite triggering having been horrifically bullied when I was in high school, um, which were half the tears. I was actually I watched it early this morning because I've had a really ridiculously busy week, so I didn't have a chance to uh, until this morning. And then so I was sitting on the bus recalling all the stones that were quite literally lobbed at my direction when I was in high school and then I felt miserable for the entire bus ride. So I didn't find it a horror movie at all. Uh, it was interesting and it was well done and just thoroughly depressing. 
it's an interesting journey that she goes on because yes. she starts off as a victim and then suddenly she's the villain and then at the end you could argue that she's the victim again. I guess I would paint her as a villain too. Anyone that murders that many people <laughs> is a villain. Um, y yes. Did they actually deserve to burn to death? No. Spoiler. Yeah, no, the, the, but the, the teacher that had been trying to help her gets killed. Yeah, I know. I, I Did know. she deserve to die? No. So is that murder? Well, yes. Is but murder bad? <laughs> <laughs> Are you condoning this kind of action? <laughs> I'm saying I understand it. <clears throat> <laughs> no, but seriously, I don't, I I think uh, I I wouldn't call her the villain. All the villains were. Um, that psychotic woman whose name I forget and her idiotic boyfriend. Sue and Billy, yes. There we go, thank you, those two. Mm -hmm. Those were the villains for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the disaster that happened at the end of the, the movie sort of happened while she was in shock. Oh, but, uh, yes, and those two are, when you're watching the movie, I mean, I, was, I watched it last night with my wife, and um, <laughs> I was surprised that she actually watched it with me. So yeah. the she's like, no wonder men don't understand women. She's crazy. <laughs> yeah, Sue. Yeah, yeah, Sue is completely insane. Because one minute she's thinking one thing, the next minute, like seconds later, her mind has changed for no obvious reason. Yeah, and without any you know time to consider or anything, just on a whim, change. So and this whole decision to. Like, who does that? Right? Um, so she's psychotic, and it, it's n never more obvious at the pig killing scene than at the pig killing scene. Yes. So, yeah. Just, she was a horrific piece of work. I think she's the villain of the piece. I don't, I don't, I cannot, uh, while I don't condone it, I cannot blame Carrie for, like, the utter destruction that happened at the end while she was in shock. Because the thing is, when she's not in shock, um, she realizes, like when she, spoiler alert again, like after she kills her mother, mm -hmm. the shock of being stabbed, of being attacked by your mother, self-defense reflexes, and then she realizes what happens and she's immediately regretful. Mm -hmm. um, so I know, I didn't, I didn't find her the villain at all. In fact, the whole way through the movie, my heart was just breaking for this. Oh point. no, I, I don't disagree, but Anyone that kills that many people is a villain. Mm, no. No? No. I mean, I... No? No, I think the, uh, there has to be malicious intent there. Yeah. And from what I saw, it was almost shock and self-defense. So, no. So, this would be similar to, um, poking at a cat until it's back up against the wall and then then it finally lashes out at, at the Yeah, attacker. more or less. And that's then you're like, well, that's part. your own damn fault for it. Like, poking a tiger with it. I would like to argue that humans are, are more evolved than animals. I, I know we're not, but I'd like to think that we are. Nope. We are just animals. I, it's just the thing is we can understand each other's communication. Some of it. Even then. There is the internet. Even then. If you watched the beginning of this episode, you'd completely understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sit here like a fish out of water and... <laughs> um, uh -oh. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't find her the villain at all. The villain for me mm. was Sue and Billy and But uh, everybody one story else. can have multiple villains. Well, yes, but I didn't... No, I don't... No? I found, no, not even... They're going to be wrong about this? Yeah, probably. I'm probably very wrong about this, but oh, honestly, I, I didn't... <clears throat> I don't think... I mean... When I came up with that, when I was thinking about it this morning, it's like, well, it could be that she's a villain, and then, you know, because you can't murder that many people, even if you're in shock. And I can't, I don't believe she was in shock. Oh, I do. I believe she was angry. Well, that, well, that too, well, but... Because Sissy Spacek is freaking scary in that movie. Yeah, uh, she does, yes. You know, she, she got an Academy Award nomination for being scary, mm -hmm. well, for acting, but for being scary. Um, as did the uh, woman who played her mother, yeah. um, Piper or something. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. But, um, no, I mean, both, both, I mean, the, if you were raised by that woman, you'd that's be it, insane too. That's it, exactly. You know? I mean, this poor girl was failed by the one person who should have been there for her. So this film um, actually launched 
careers or at least uh, gave a significant boost to a number of uh, people. The mother, I forgot to write out her name, who got the uh, nominee it here. there. Piper Laurie. Yeah, that's it, Piper Laurie. Uh, Sissy Spix Spacek, of course, Nancy Ellen, William Catt, and Amy Irving, and Billy John Travolta. Yeah, that actually that took me by surprise. I saw his name in the credits. I'm like, wait, what? Really? Yeah. How did I not know this? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, apparently the uh, the boyfriend character goes on to be the greatest. The, he goes on to be in a show called The Greatest American Hero. Oh, really? The blonde guy? Yeah, the blonde curly haired guy. Yeah. Which my wife remembers the show. I'm like, I vaguely remember it, and she's googling the thing and playing it back and like. Mm -hmm. I think I've heard it. <clears throat> it's, it's funny how certain movies or really shows can really kind of um, catapult people. Um, if you remember All in the Family, the TV show there, uh, the son-in-law, who the father always called Meatball, was Rob Schneider. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, who went on to produce films and direct films. Hmm. Yeah. And there's some interesting things in, in this movie. movie. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it's directed by Brian De Palma, who yep. went on to do Scarface mm -hmm. and some other notable films. Um, one of the things I love about this movie is they do this really cool, he uses it a few times, this split diopter effect, where you have the, the distance and the foreground in focus, and if you look carefully, you can see this very fuzzy line down, you know, down the frame where to do that, because that's how you did that back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uses it to great effect. And then at the end, when you're doing all of this split screen stuff, mm -hmm. This is on film in the 1970s. Yeah. This was a humong. This must have been a humongous amount of work to edit, because you would have to get those two, you know, to cut all of that. Literally, cut all of that together. Yeah. And um, it must have taken weeks to do um, for such a short sequence. Yeah. So. And yet, even for that time period, um, the budget wasn't exactly huge for the film either. Well, typically horror movies don't get a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But it went on to be a seminal film. I mean, every, when you say Carrie, everyone knows what you're talking about. Yeah, this is. I mean, this is the first time I watched this film, and even before, I know exactly mm -hmm. what people were talking about. Um, even if I didn't know the specifics of the plot, mm -hmm. I knew. You know, it doesn't end well for somebody. <laughs> doesn't end well for anybody. Nobody comes out of there unscathed. That's true. Like yeah. no. One. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's people off camera that did okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people making out in the parking lot, they survived. <laughs> no, they were run over by the fire truck. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Whoops. Uh, interesting note, the, the scene at the end, uh, spoiler alert, uh, where um, Sue, because she um, was disinvited from the, uh, from the prom, is the only survivor, right? one that bullied her and mm -hmm. uh, carried through all this. No, she doesn't survive. Yeah, she does. No. Car explosion. They try and run Carrie over. She kills them both in a car explosion. The only one who survives is the one who um, told her prom date to take Carrie to the prom. Yes, that's who he's talking about. Yeah, Sue. Oh, that's Sue? That's Sue. Really? Yeah. Um, in, the, in the end scene oh, yes. where she has the dream where the hand goes up and grabs her foot, mm -hmm. um, that's her arm. Grabs her arm. Eric grabs her arm. Pardon me. That's actually um, Sissy Spacek in there. They had to. Um, had, they buried her literally with a hole for her to reach her hand up through. And uh, the director was like, "We'll get a double. We'll get a double." And Sissy Spacek was like, "No, this is something I have to do. I want to do this." Mm -hmm. And so she did that uh, herself because she felt it um, appropriate for the character. Mm -hmm. Because apparently they shot it to reverse yes, um, it was shot scenes. backwards so it looked weird yeah mm -hmm. more dreamlike state and that kind of thing and they did a really good job of yeah. that actually mm -hmm. actually one thing that I thought was really amusing was how a lot of the a lot of the outdoor stuff was in soft like in 1970s soft focus yes yes and it's like, <laughs> that cracked me up it's like is the lens dirty and it's like no that's actually just the way they that was just the look they were going for yeah. and that, that's fine but uh, yes I mean when they um, they did a lot of interesting things. I mean, Sissy Spacek specifically isolated herself from the rest of the crew, the rest of the cast, during filming, to maintain herself as feeling like an outsider. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yes, there's some, I mean, when uh, they flip the car, that looks so convincing to me. Yeah. It's just so, it's just, I know it's a trick, 
I know, but it looks great. Yeah. And that car's rolling. I mean, yes, when they when when they show the interior of the car, they're obviously not rolling the car. It's just them pretending to roll around. But yeah. the, when the car is actually rolling, it looks great. They are really destroying a car. And, okay, I mean, it's a movie. They have a budget, but it looked great. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree. And uh, mm -hmm. I I think. Sissy Space did a really fabulous job as Carrie. She's, yes, uh, like I said, she is just down, I mean, I would not want to meet her in that mode. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> don't piss this woman off. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, it Because, was. you know, she literally kills everybody she comes in, even people who help her. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, it's... Even though in, in her mind, all of them are laughing at her. Yes, absolutely. In her mind, everyone's laughing at her, but that's... Yes. I've been there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just without the really cool telekinesis. So, how many schools have you burnt down? <laughs> None, I have zero telekinesis. But had I telekinesis? <laughs> <laughs> oh my. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's not go down that road. No. <laughs> <laughs> Under pending legislation, anything you can say will be used against you in court of law. <laughs> and we write from a cushy jail cell. I make money is writing your memoir. If I could remember anything, I don't remember much. I mean, all gone. Buried. <laughs> no, I mean, Repressed. <laughs> We have plenty of time to dredge that up. <laughs> We're here talking about a movie. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Not, not a book, and not the terrible things that happened to people in high school. Even though it's relevant, sort of, almost, kind of, in a, we've gone wildly off topic and down a rat hole. You can play the rat hole song here. Um, I'll send it to you in email shortly. <laughs> I, I think the best part of the reason why this movie um, was a success why the book was a success and why the movie was a success as well because um, uh, many people can re re replate, yeah, relate with this character and the um, social dysfunction or whatever that they've gone through in school yeah. and had no recourse and here Carrie has a recourse against said oppressors. Yeah. Yeah, and no, it, it totally read to me like, like a, a bully child fantasy. Mm -hmm. you know, I swear, all bully children everywhere, if all living they had telekinesis, every child is going, if only, if only. <laughs> it's an interesting era because this is the first, story, first book that Stephen King wrote. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on a little bit later on to write a book called Firestarter, which is about a girl with pyrokinesis. Yeah. Which, you know, if you're going to have the power. <laughs> You know, you know, why would you want to be able to pick up someone and throw them across when you can just set them on fire? <laughs> <laughs> Makes the point a lot quicker. Um, but see, he goes through a phase of doing all these interesting supernatural things. So I enjoyed that. It's very 70s, but uh, it's 70s because he was there writing it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I don't, I actually, I don't know much about this movie other than what I just watched. I didn't do much research on it either, so I'm relying on these two more. <laughs> you have disappointed so far, I have to say. I've just all I've got is how I related to the story and the characters, and honestly, it was it was really well done. The mother was terrifying mm -hmm. um, and entirely believable. I could totally see that actually happening. I I I knew religious crazy people like that. I knew of one who. Uh, who homeschooled her daughter um, and, you know, left the creation of Earth and dinosaurs out of it completely so that when she grew up and left home and saw a documentary on dinosaurs, she had a nervous breakdown. Like, it was, it's pretty ridiculous, it's pretty scary what <clears throat> religious nuts of any denomination will... No, it's, will they don't them. understand what they're, they, they think that the power of their belief will trump reality. Yeah. And it doesn't. It never does. Unless you're a telekinetic, pyrokinetic, or telepathic. In the Let's book, in the book, actually, <laughs> Carrie is telepathic as well to a degree. Oh, is she? I believe she is. 
Just give me a second to try to remember this. Yes, because at the end, uh, what's the name of the girl that let her go to the prom? Sue? Sue? Sue, Sue experiences Carrie's death because she's with her when she dies. Telekinetic, uh, telepathically, which is part of why she's so screwed up. Oh, okay. Um, Oh, I wish they had shown that in the movie. Well, there was a lot of stuff they didn't show in the movie because yeah. it was, uh, I mean, in the, in the book, she destroys a substantial <laughs> portion of the town, I think. Mm. Like, there's hundreds of dead. Hundreds of dead. Oh, really? Which may be why I'm like, villain. Yeah, but, well, yes. <clears throat> <laughs> but even then, you know, if you kill hundreds of people or dozens of people, you're still a bad person. Um, <laughs> I know. We shouldn't have to resort to murder. <laughs> Do you hear me, Internet? Murder <laughs> is bad. Off topic. Doxing, also bad. <laughs> um, <clears throat> talking about the uh, characters now, um, uh, Sissy Spisic um, had been nominated because of her portrayal of this character, too. So obviously, it's a very strong portrayal. Uh, in that now I know a couple of the other actresses that were um, looked for for this part at the time were Carrie Fisher and Melanie Melanie Griffith. Oh yeah. So I'm curious as to your guys' thoughts as to how you thought that would have played out for them with him. Now Carrie Fisher I know had an issue with timing because she was in a Star Wars the first one at the time or was going through the beginning process of that. I think that's yeah, why it she been, turned down. Yeah, it would have been early in that period. But um, anyhow, just how they would have played the character, what do you guys think based on the, those characters, uh, actresses? And just, um, I, no, I don't even, I can't even imagine anybody else in that role, just because it was so, Sissy it was so scary. And Sissy Spacek brought an awkwardness to it. <clears throat> and she wasn't that young when she did it. Because she's, she's got to be in her 60s now, which means she would have been nearly 30 when she shot Carrie. So that's something he said, is you know, nearly 30 playing a high school student. Um, but no, she, she was, she, she, I think she portrayed the, the awkwardness of the character very, very well. And I think that's hard to do mm. for people who are, I think a lot of actors, they're so used to being present that being, so withdrawn. So withdrawn, so wound up uh, in your head. That I think that's a bit hard. Um, I, I can't say how Melanie Griffith or um, Carrie Fisher would do in that. I, you know, I don't know Carrie Fisher outside of Star Wars. I don't know any, I couldn't tell you anything she's been in. And Melanie Griffith, I don't know, I can't off the top of my head think of a film she's been in. I know she's been in lots of films. I know I've seen her in lots of films, but there's nothing that, there's no movie that, when I think Sissy Spacek, I think Carrie. Okay. You know, um, when I think. Uh, anyway, that. Well, something for your future thoughts when you see movies with yeah, me. Probably, I probably say. not. Answer the question in the comments down below. Yes, please. That's what they're there for. <laughs> He's looking for comments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nothing being added yet. No, nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever create that, create that YouTube account? No, I didn't. I really should. <laughs> okay, if uh, you were to give it a rating out of five... Oh, wait, no, final thoughts, thoughts first, and then give it a rating out of five. Start with you, Matt, actually, because he started the film. He started! No, he started! <laughs> <laughs> this is okay. what I'm allowed to be. Um, <clears throat> uh, sure, final thoughts. There was one little glitch that I thought was a glitch anyhow in, in the movie because of course it has to happen. It's when she's uh, hosing people down with the hose and starts at an electrical fire. Yes, because of course there has to be some electrical work nearby in order to propagate that, uh, to, to, to initiate that. that was, but that's a... That's a but wait, you, you have an issue with the fact that there was a microphone on stage while there was a fire hose going? Despite this being like a 1970s prom, where there would have been a microphone on stage. Is that your um, issue? It, it's just, I, I don't know. Um, Where's the glitch? In the Matrix. So keep going. 
Uh, never mind. I, I guess maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm thinking of more more modern ways of things would be set up as opposed to. I don't know. They had lots of very powerful lights. Water in powerful lights is bad. Don't mix it. Water in powerful lights and a really angry telekinetic. <laughs> <laughs> All of this is a mixture for bad things about to happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, anyhow. Uh, uh, final thoughts about the movie is that the movie itself was very good, I, I thought, and um, I can understand the character, the character's um, development rather well through the movie. However, regardless of what happens, this is not an excuse for murder. Murder is, say the word, bad. She doesn't believe us. <laughs> okay. Final thoughts? Oh wait, no, star rating. Um, okay, star rating. Um, you know, given time period, um, honestly, I think they did all they could with it. I think I'll have to give it five out of five. You're on a roll today. Final thoughts and star rating. Oh. No, you first. No, me first. <laughs> Guests first. Um. Um. I love, I mean, obviously this is a, a film from the 70s, which means all of these effects are practical, and I love the attention to detail that went into that. The fire effects are astonishing. You know, when she's walking down the stairs and there's fire everywhere, there was fire everywhere. You know, I love that. I, um, so I think I would give this a solid four, a good solid four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it holds up reasonably well today, and even the reboot, which was done in uh, 2013, is worth a watch as well. So, yes. So what could this have done to get a five? I'm curious. For that, for the um, uh, ability of the filmmakers. Honestly, I don't know. I'm very, I'm very cautious with giving fives to anything. Uh, for myself, I, I really liked this film. I mean, it's obviously from the 70s, but it holds up really well. Uh, I can understand Carrie's motivations. Um, and actually, my heart went out to Carrie the, the entire movie, even when she was killing people. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, murder is bad. <laughs> Genuinely, I uh, I left. I was not scared during this film, though. I don't think I would call it a horror. But I left the film feeling utterly depressed for everyone involved. I mean, people died who didn't deserve it, and um, people that deserved it deserved it. The people that deserved it definitely did deserve it. Oh, I don't feel sorry for them, but and I do feel sorry for the uh, for Sue right at the end of the film, mm -hmm. who will be living with those nightmares probably for the rest of her life. Um, so yeah, it was it was really good, um, really depressing, not at all scary. So I'm at four and a half. <laughs> Tom really hates halves. I mean, it wasn't perfect. Uh, you could tell it was from the 70s, but I, I don't really have that much that I can fault it for. So yeah, four and a half. It's a good film. I really recommend people watching it. So, there we go. Uh, if you disagree, agree. Whatever. I disagree. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> leave a comment down below. <laughs> don't leave a comment because you, you say I don't care. <laughs> Other people might care. Um, if you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook uh, and I, you can find me on Twitter at SNKaliar. WTL. At WTL for Tom, and he oh. doesn't do Twitter. <laughs> so. He cannot date himself <laughs> with the internet. Alright, so Tom, you get to pick the next movie. Starship Troopers. No, out of the ball. Oh. <laughs> okay. Doesn't make sense. Because he had it upside down. Army of Darkness. 1992, so that'll That's be... a great movie. Is it? Okay. But it... you have to watch the first two. Evil Dead 1, Evil Dead 2. 
boomstick. Sure. Army of Darkness, 1992. Um, so that's the next movie we will be reviewing in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks very much for watching. Bye! Lot two.